from San Mateo, California, it's theCUBE, covering SnapLogic Innovation Day 2018. Brought to you by SnapLogic. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the crossroads. It's 101 and 92 in San Mateo, California. A lot of software companies have developed here. It's got a long history. At one point it was really kind of the, the all the software in Silicon Valley was based here versus chips in the south and kind of new media in the north. It's not quite the same anymore, but that's really the roots of the area. You're probably stuck in traffic if you're here. So look up, you'll see the Snaplogic sign. That's where we are at their new headquarters. And we're excited to have Practitioner, we love getting customers on. It's Omar Navas, he's the global head of digital transformation and a CISO, small, uh, not, not a small responsibility <laughs> at Quantum. Mm -hmm. Great to see you. Well, thank you for uh, inviting me, happy to be here. Absolutely, so you are <laughs> one of these, uh, could, could be the new unicorn, the head of digital <laughs> transformation. Mm -hmm. So you were brought in for that role, you've been with the company a little over six months, less than a year. Yeah. Why did they bring you in and where do you get started? Well, uh, you know, uh, it, it's uh, it's a very interesting role. Uh, it's w you know what digital transformation is about change, and 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 then we all know that that's hard, right? And, and that's why I was specifically brought into the company to help really you know ch uh, help change the operating model and the business model for the company. So what I really do there is uh, work with the leadership of the company and un understand what their ambitions are. Right, uh, and then the then the exciting part starts, where my right. team and I actually help change, convert that ambition into reality. Right, right, and and so in, in a, so that we can create a measurable way to understand that the reality that we're creating or that ambition that we want to achieve is it really meaningful for us or not? And who do you report to? Who brought you in? So I actually report to the uh, C, uh, CFO of the okay. company, which the is CFO. the uh, CFO. Okay. CFO. So I mean, you you see there's sort of different places where where they they, they you know these roles fit in. But in, in our organization, it made a lot of sense because we're, as we're going through the transformation, it was important for us to sort of uh, be close to the money. Right, sure. You know, because there's investment required and you want to manage the cost as well. So that's where, I, where I'm at. And it's also very interesting that you're a CISO mm -hmm. as well, Chief Information mm -hmm. Security Officer, right. for those not following on the acronym mm -hmm. uh, world. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so security is a really important piece. That is not an insignificant job. So. How much of your time is is transformation? How much of your time is CISO? CISO. Yeah, I, I think so. Most of my time is is through transformation, and I, you know, as as part of when we look at the security, uh, we look at security as part of the transformation because as we we evolve the company to a new model, uh, it has ramifications on, uh, on how do we secure the new environment as well. So so there's a there's a split. Right, so I, I have more than one full-time job, I guess you can say that. Right, right, welcome to Silicon Valley, right? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, I, I spend most of my time uh, focused around uh, uh, digital transformation, uh, but security is a very important aspect of my role, uh, and we, ma we want to make sure that, that the environment continues to be, the sa be safe. Right, yeah. so there's, there's somebody out here watching this mm -hmm. video, they're sitting in their office, they just got the edict that they're now in charge of digital transformation mm -hmm. at their company, and they're pulling their hair <coughs> out, and hopefully looking for CUBE interviews to help them out. So, mm -hmm. where do they go, how do they get started, what kind yeah. of resources should they be, should they be asking for, should they be leveraging, should they expect, to give them some chance of success in this very, very difficult role? Um, so, you know, I, I think there's a lot of places where companies can start, and, and I think one of the one of the things that, that you have to un understand is how digitally mature you, you as a company are. Uh, I mean, one of the key things uh, in this industry, as we all see, the, 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 the speed and the rate of innovation is so tremendous, uh, and we see these waves of of disruptive technology that comes in, uh, and there are companies who are adopting or embracing those technologies, and and think about you know uh, mobile or cloud or uh, analytics and social, uh, and in those companies that adopt those technologies, they can gain a certain level of efficiency and performance improvement. Um, it, but 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 the cycle is very very fast, and now you we are seeing yet another wave of technology innovation around. IOT, APIs, right. artificial intelligence. Uh, and, and so so if you can quickly jump to that next round of uh, technology innovations, we, you can continue to build those efficiencies within the company and gain that competitive advantage or maintain that competitive advantage. And, and I think it's important for the companies to realize that, that they have to 
they have to engage in this very, very quickly. Right. Right. I, you know, and, and it's not a one-time process either. It's 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 never going to end. The transformation is never going to end. So you have to continually invest in it. Uh, and where where you start with and where you go uh, is to make sure that you you understand where the company wants to go, right? Uh, and how the technology can can help you get there. And that's the that's sort of my hardest job part of my hard, hardest part of my job is to really convince the leadership and say this is where we will gain uh, some significant benefit. And, and so uh, when I go to to my my CEO or my CFO or the board. Uh, what I'm trying to help them understand is that the, you know by investing in technology A, B, C, w you know whichever it is, this is what we what we achieve, or this is sort of the picture that we're part of the puzzle that we're trying to build. Right. Yeah. I love this concept, mm -hmm. digital maturity. I've never mm -hmm. I've never heard anyone say that before. Mm -hmm. So it almost begs a question: Is mm -hmm. there some type of a checklist that mm -hmm. you have to have made a minimum? Sure. Either acknowledgement, I don't know, commitment's the right word. You know, you, mm -hmm. obviously you can't, you got to be 100% on cloud, blah, blah, blah. But, but it does beg, you know, is there some type of, you know, have you adopted some cloud? Have you adopted some right. of this, some of that, some of this to demonstrate A, that you're, you are digitally mature or headed in that direction, right. and B, these are kind of necessary Correct. conditions to execute the digital transformation that right. I'm trying to put yeah. in place. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, and I, I don't have a specific measuring stick of, of, you know, where you measure your digital maturity, but the, th but the things that you talked about, you know, for example, if your organization is still dealing with uh, sort of maintaining their own data centers and, and you're investing resources to that, right? Uh, you have not adopted cloud, mobile applications, you know, your applications cannot be accessed remotely, then you're certainly not very digitally mature, right? right? You know, uh, how much self-service is available for, the, uh, for your users internally or for, for your customers, those are other signs of digital maturity. Um, another way, you know, another area to look at is, is you know, you have a lot of data within the organization how are you using that data, right? Is the data sitting in silos? Or is the data being integrated and, and now you can, you know, you have analytics running on top of it. That's another, you know, measure of, of your maturity and as you look across the companies, uh, you will see that, you know, there are companies who are sitting there at, in sort of the, the old traditional model of, you know, we're going to build these long-term strategic plans, and you know, right. uh, y y and that's also a sign of, of of accepting or adopting these technologies because because they're they're hoping or waiting to really fully understand what the technology is going to be when they get there, and they need to know all of those those how and what it would look like when they right. get there. Uh, and, and I think that's also, to me, is a sign of uh, of of digital maturity of uh, of a company is do they understand what what waves of disruption or of technology is coming out? Right. Yeah. So it's interesting. Mm -hmm. You said your your biggest challenge mm -hmm. is going to the board in the mm -hmm. in the C suite <coughs> and telling them how this is going right. to to mm -hmm. work. On the other hand, they brought you in mm -hmm. not that long ago with this very specific sure. objective. So clearly, you've got some mm -hmm. great executive support. So how do you convince them? I mean, what are some of the things that you found? Sure. Just work. What What are the right stories? What are right. the right examples? What are the right use cases that even the the digitally immature mm -hmm. finally like? Ah, oh, okay, uh, now I get it. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, it, it helped that you know they were already thinking about it before <laughs> right. they brought me right. in. Right. So so that that helps a lot. You right. know, th no doubt. Um, I, I think so. So the things that you know when I come in, came in, and I looked at the, at the company. Uh, you know, th so there's many places where you can start, right? I mean, some of the some of the areas that you can think about is, uh, you know, how do you improve the cus uh, customer service, right? That's a very important aspect of of how do you you know you become a better organization. So uh, there, another area is uh, uh, process improvement, and a third area is business uh, model improvement. So so I came in and I talked more about is before we actually start looking at. Uh, modifying or, or enhancing our, our business models, we need to get to a better, uh, a higher performance level within the organization. And therefore, you know, I'm more focused, initially more focused around how do we improve our uh, processes internally, right? A and, uh, and for us, based on our situation, and we're used for different companies, for us, the, the first step in that was really to make sure that the people, the systems, and the data are more interconnected. 
right? So with, even within that, uh, first step for me, for the first phase for us was really to make sure that the people are connected. So do we have the right set of collaboration communication tools, right? Do we have the right set of uh, analytics to sit on top of it? Right, right. So we just finished that phase. Um, e again, you know, want to make sure that these are tangible, small uh, steps because right. Uh, the, the, you know, you need to show some wins very, very quickly. And so for us, the first step was, let's get the people connected. Um, so we just did that. Now the next step for us is to get our systems connected, right? So again, as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of data that, that's sitting there. Uh, it has to be uh, integrated. Right, there's right. tremendous value that you can, uh, you can gain from that. So that's what we're, we're getting into. This is our second phase of okay. uh, how do we connect the data together so this way we can now start to get the, the next level of efficiency right. out of the company. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I am mm -hmm. guessing mm -hmm. uh, after sitting mm -hmm. here all day that the integration of mm -hmm. your data, obviously mm -hmm. we're at SnapLogic, is going to be easier than getting the people to change their <laughs> their processes and the yeah. connected yeah. and the connected <laughs> people. What were some of the tricks to get people to adopt these these new tools before we even start talking about the data? Uh, so, so I, I think there's, you know, you have to show them the value. Obviously, uh, you know, so if you talk about, the, you know, if you're talking about communication and collaboration tools, I, I think for the first thing is really about awareness, right? Right. Uh, then, then there's a little bit of a, you know, sort of top-down sort of mandate, or or you may want to call sponsorship. That I think that that helps. <laughs> uh, or stick. <laughs> or stick. <laughs> you, you know, so you, you, that helps uh, because I, I, you know, for. for for some companies, I mean, and, and for Quantum it was true, is that we did not have a corporate uh, collaboration, uh, sorry, uh, communication tool. Right. Uh, there were multiples. Right. Right. So the, within the groups, they were they were fine because they were able to communicate, but within the groups, uh, between groups, they were not able to. Right. right. So right. so we we had to standardize on that. So so I think that you know w w you have to kind of w show these. There's always skepticism because everything. You know, when people are used to certain things, right. it seems to work for right. them, right? Right. Uh, it this way oh, yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> right. And, and so, so you have to, you have to, uh, you have to show them new things, and right. you have to create the awareness, and, and then they start to see the value. Uh, it's not, it's not a one-time thing. Right. right. It's a, it's a continuous effort. You know, so we do uh, lunch and learns, we do uh, webinars. You know, we do sort of uh, the support sessions and things like this. So this way, people are more comfortable sort of taking on the new technology. But it's so important, uh -huh. right? Because your your probability of success mm -hmm. if you don't get mm -hmm. the buy-in from the participants mm -hmm. is not very high. So the fact right. that you started there mm -hmm. on the people before you really d dove into the technology, mm -hmm. I think is pretty insightful mm -hmm. and will probably mm -hmm. increase your probability of success on the next phase Correct. tremendously yeah. versus if you just integrated all the data and you integrate all the apps and you still don't have people talking together. Yeah. Probably not going to be very successful. Exactly, because because the data is is in all these different business units and different groups, and if they're not talking to each other, uh, connecting the data is has little or no value right. whatsoever, right? So so to, to me, it's really about you know that creating that connectivity. So for us, I mean, you asked me, you know, sort of how do we start? So it's we start with connecting. You know, or so connection is the first sort of phase of it, and then the second is is to to empower people, uh, you know, to create more self service right. uh, and create more sort of autonomous units, so that they can start to create their uh, value for themselves and for the company. So right. it's really about enabling the whole organization, sort of the groundswell type of approach. Uh, but but you you know you you kind of very strategically you're gonna s s first bring the l people to that l that sort of common place right. so it's easy for right. them to work. You bring the data w along with it, uh, and then you standardize the environment uh, or simplify it if if you can, and and therefore it's easy for them to start taking on the services themselves. Right. Yeah. So you finish the first phase, and now the next phase is now you're gonna start integrating all the systems. Correct. So obviously we're sitting here at SnapLogic, mm -hmm. this big piece of right. what they mm -hmm. do. So why did you decide to go with mm -hmm. them and how are they helping you uh, in this process? So for, for us, for, for this phase of our digital transformation, you know, there were two things that were really, really important uh, for us. Um, uh, one was really about how do we connect these systems together in a simple, standardized way. Um, so so that, was, that was one criteria for us. And then the second, you know, and I think, uh, I believe SnapLogic does a great job. We're, you know, we're going we're gonna to build it out at the back, you know, sort of core of our network. 
Uh, and then the second piece was really, can we take this platform and make it available to our end users so that they can, they can create the connections or, 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 or access the data that they want, right? right? Um, and, and that's again where SnapLogic was, uh, you know, uh, was able to demonstrate that this is, this is very easy for right. them to use. So that, those were the two sort of the very pivotal things for us uh, as part of this phase of our digital transformation uh, as to why we picked uh, SnapLogic. Yeah, well it's funny because mm -hmm. you, used, you used the word self-service in your mm -hmm. first phase. So I think, you right. know, kind of this thing we hear over mm -hmm. and over and over, it's so important to, mm -hmm. to, to drive innovation in big companies is yeah. democratization, democratization of the data, right. democratization of the tools, Absolutely. and then let people find out things and then actually be able to uh, execute exactly. it. Exactly, yeah, because you know, IT, there's a constant pressure on IT to cut cost, you know, uh, and so we cannot serve the whole company for all the things that needs to, to happen. And, and the technology and the business is changing at such, at such a rapid pace that unless we have experts who really understand that unit, business unit function that well, we are not the best people to, to build those things for them. Right. They are the ones. Right. So, but, but, it, but then you have a technology learning barrier or the learning curve of, you know, do you need to be, uh, put developers in there? Uh, so, so that's why to, to us this you know, SnapLogic technology helps us that the, we, uh, we believe that we can extend this ability to those users who really know their business, they can make the changes as, as they come, right? right? And, and the IT can help make sure that the, the right set of infrastructure uh, exists and the right level of connectivity exists. So mm -hmm. I'm just curious, mm -hmm. I know you're still early days mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. project, but are there any Luddites that, that mm -hmm. have kind of come around since you've been been mm -hmm. on this journey that suddenly kind of woke up and said, oh, okay, now now I get it, now mm -hmm. I see the value, now mm -hmm. I kind of understand where we're trying to go, who maybe didn't think that way at the beginning? Um, or they all just know they, they got to they go? No, I, I think, you know, I think we're, we're constantly learning along the way. Um, um, I, I think one of the one of the key uh, things that, that we learned uh, just recently, and I, uh, SnapLogic is going to help us with that particular aspect of it, is that it, you know we we saw that there were a lot of systems uh, that you know they they work fine. I mean they they we don't use them. Uh, you know, like it's not a daily use type of thing. They they get used quarterly or or annually, but we we realized that if we uh, if we can just sort of bring more automation into those those uh, uh, those processes, and we can add, tie it back to longer historical data, then we can we can get build more insights around it, right? So I think when when we showed this to to the users and the the you know especially the the CFO, then now you all of a sudden you know the sort of the light bulbs go on. It's like oh this is great. Right, that I don't have to rely on only a small window of information. Now I have a much broader right. Uh, uh, window. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, Amar, thank mm -hmm. you for uh, spending a few minutes with us and, and sharing your story. I wish you nothing but success on this thank you very much. on this journey. I'm sure it'll be long and exciting yeah, with yeah. Uh, twists and turns and uh, highs and lows. So good well, luck. Looking forward to that. All right. Yeah, okay, He's you. Amar. I'm Jeff Frick. We're at Snap Logic in San Mateo, California. Thanks for watching.